speech of Madame Janine and C. Planich, our special representative of the Secretary General for the United Nations Assistant Mission in New York. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests here present. It's a pleasure to be part of the launch of this 16 day of activist campaign to address violence against women and girls. And the Prime Minister thanks you so much for lending your support to this important event. Now I think that the global theme of this year's campaign, which focuses on investing to prevent violence against women and girls, is particularly redundant across the globe, included here in Iraq. The harsh reality is one in three women experience physical and sexual violence at least one in their lifetime. And the cost of extremely high is so many ways for the woman. Hence, preventing such violence is key. Key to the women and girls first and foremost as they are suffering in the inimitable but also key for the family, key for the community, and the society in a large. Ladies and gentlemen, late last year, an ambitious program was adopted by Iraqi government under the leadership of His Excellency the Prime Minister. As I state in my most recent briefing to the Security Council, in the period which follows the Council, so the emergence of several important steps as promising initiatives that to improve service delivery, boost the economic growth, and enhance well-being across all sectors of the society. I sincerely hope that all Iraqis will stand to benefit from this possibility ahead included Iraqi women and girls, particularly since the government program explicitly includes goal to empower and protect them. That said, and as well as known, it will not be only easy to fit, let alone give up. In a complex and fast-evolving environment, such commitment all too often get pushed aside of competitive priority. So yes, an event like this one can act as necessary reminder all of us to work. We all must stop violence. Violence against women and girls will not tackle itself. Relentless efforts are needed to prevent and address it through various means. And at the end of the day, eliminating such violence is all about investing our collaborative will, resources, and time so to bring together about lasting change. Now, when we speak about violence against women and girls, what are we really talking about? Of course, the very real threat of physical and sexual violence still await many women in the society. This is true also for other forms of violence, such emotional abuse, which can manifest as effort to degrade, control, shame, or humiliation. Threat, intimidation, and harassment are also included. All are too often part and parcel of a woman's life. And why exclusion and marginalization can be driven factors, women in a role of power are certainly not immune. Sadly, acts of violence can happen anywhere, in home, in community, in workplace, in governance structure. No space or area is extant. When preparing for this event, I was glad to learn of the focus placed on enhancing the role of women in decision-making process. 
the connection between violence against women and women participation is not one which is always made. But let us think about for the moment. Take, for example, a woman experiencing violence in her own home. Whether physical or emotional, it's not hard to see why she may have a harder time than others in casting her vote during election or in participating in community-based governance. Another example, a woman thinking of putting herself forward in local or national election. If she thinks this will result in protection risk, whether through online abuse or threat of harassment or intimidation, she may think twice. And we must remember that there are always structural forms of violence way in which women are systematically excluded from the table around which big decisions are made. It's crystal clear that no country can achieve its goal, whether political, economical, or social, without the participation and the leadership of its women. And it's just as clear that this effort to support women to assume their role of decision makers must take alongside initiative to address all violence against them. Now, what we need to be done to name just few steps. First and foremost, law will have to change. For example, it's high time that a law against domestic violence is adopted. Accountability and adequate support to survival among to the very last Iraqi women and girls is deserved. Tailored policy and strategy will also prove crucial. And here in UN, Iraq has been glad to partner with the Iraqi government in developing a strategy to counter hate speech, which include elements targeting violence against women. This is one example of policy change that will lessen the threat of violence facing by women who put themselves forward in leadership position. Thirdly, taking up again the theme of investment, we need to, as I say, put our money where our mouth is. Taking it is not enough. Talking it is not enough. There must be investment in government and civil society institutions which have the expertise to advance women's rights. Participation, empowerment. And this is needed to encompass the provision of services critical to survival of violence, including psychosocial and livelihood support. Fourthly, we must ensure that our message today are not simply confined to events like this one. In another word, sensitization is key to prevent violence against women and girls. There have been many successful examples of awareness raising campaigns led by the government and the civil society, which the United Nations has been proud to support, but we must see more. Across all channels, all mediums, from print news to town hall to television show, the role of the media is critical in this respect. Ladies and gentlemen, as I said, in Iraq today, opportunity abound. This is a truth for women and girls, as it is for men and boys. But opportunities are only as strong as the effort made to harness them. So let us take inspiration from each other today and recommit to prevent and eradicate violence against women and girls. And I close the speech. Shukran.